ist eine gute Frage, wie wir das formulieren. Your questions to Munich, to the Münchner, I don't know. <lacht> also ich meine, wir können es natürlich auch einfach irgendwie so Straßenumfrage oder sowas nennen, aber ask the Munich people oder sowas irgendwie, fragt die Münchner oder... You, a you asked, we... Keine Ahnung. <lacht> you asked, we asked the Munich yeah, genau. people. Hä? Did you get that? Cool. I'm so also ich verstehe nur Bahnhof. You only understand train station? It's all Greek to me. Understanding train station. Living between cultures with Josh and Faye. Welcome back to a new episode, everyone. I'm Feli. And I'm Josh. Welcome back, everyone. And you can see that we are again in separate locations. So that means that Feli is back in Cincinnati and I'm still here yes. in Munich. How, was your, how are your travels? Very good. I don't know if you guys remember that I told you that my trip to Munich was kind of annoying and everything got canceled and delayed, etc. This time everything was perfectly on time and the smoothest trip you could imagine. So. <laughs> and I saw that you used uh, um, Global Entry for the first time. I did. That was really a little cool. weird, though, confusing. Uh, you guys should check out uh, Feely's. Uh, I think you did a reel on it. Yeah, real on, TikTok, uh, YouTube shorts. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure yeah. it's everywhere you can find it. But um, it was super weird. I've never gotten a little customs card like you got, uh, like that little yellow thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was surprised that it even took you 15 minutes, uh, like you said. Well, but. with custom, like after I uh, like waiting for my bag and then going uh, through and okay, rechecking okay, my okay, bag, okay, and yeah. not like going through the actual just immigration was like a couple minutes. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's so um, nice. But then, I mean, I just until my bag was there and then until yeah. I made it because uh, Charlotte Airport is kind of like stretched long. Like it's mm -hmm. there's like long, long um, hallways. Yeah. No, ah. Yeah. Just like long ways you have to go. And then it just yeah. takes a while until you carry your suitcase all the way over there. Um, yeah. And then uh, you have to recheck it. Obviously, that all like was like kind of all in all 15 okay. minutes. But um, yeah, it was interesting because I think even if I didn't have global entry, in that situation, I would have still been just as quick because yeah. uh, Charlotte is actually a pretty chill airport. That's also where I activated my green card for that exact reason. Because I was like, ah, really? Yeah, because I knew that in my experience, it's always been kind of like relaxed. Because at least for this flight that comes in from Munich, this time and I think the last few times, this was always the only international flight that was coming in at the time. Whereas ah, like okay. in Chicago, at a lot of times you have like four or five yeah, flights yeah. at the same time and then everyone's trying to go through immigration. And yeah, I remember when I activated my green card, uh, which means that when you go through immigration, you have to then go basically into secondary inspection. So you have to go to the offices with them and they have to do some paperwork for you. Mm. And I was so scared at the time that, you know, it was going to take hours that I picked that airport for that exact reason. Yeah. But this time also, um, like all the other people that were with me on the flight that I just, you know, recognized from seeing them on the flight, they were through immigration just as quickly as I was. But it was still cool to experience it for yeah. the first time. And I know in the future, it's actually going to save me some time. So I'm excited yeah, yeah. for that. It's just nice to know that like there's no it's not a uh what do you say a coin toss of if you're gonna have to wait for a while or not it's just nice to have the the, the certainty Security. and yeah. but it, i guess it's weird too that you still have you still had to show your passport and your green card right yeah it was, i, guess I it don't know sense. i think it was kind of different that day i don't know if they had technical difficulties or if maybe like just they, because you're not a u.s citizen that's no 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 the that. person was know. literally there and told everyone who was going through global entry that they only had to scan their face like only step in front of it mm -hmm. and then continue to the office. well that's normally what happens to me I, i've never had to fill out a, oh, a okay. questionnaire okay. it just takes the picture and then i go to the officer but the officer never checks any of any okay. documents for me you just i just give him the piece of paper or him or her okay but see i didn't get a piece of paper like it was literally ah. just yeah it didn't do anything else it literally just scanned my thing and then the, uh, uh, okay. the airport employee said then. yeah like follow here and go to the officer but they said that to everyone so I don't yeah, know. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? Now we're getting way too into the details of Global Entry. For well, I should quick. explain real quick, though, for those of you who yeah. don't know what that even is, because I know that some people obviously who don't travel internationally a whole lot or just have mm -hmm. never been in touch with this don't know what that is. So basically, when you re-enter the U.S. from an international trip, you always have to go through like the immigration line. When you travel mm -hmm. to Germany, that's usually relatively quickly. But in the U.S., that can take time because depending on your immigration status, whether you're a tourist or citizen, or you have like a work visa, they really, really question you uh, very intensely. I mean, we mentioned that in the visa episode. Mm -hmm. And global entry yeah. means that you undergo like a, a background check previously. So mm -hmm. is it like, I think, isn't it even the FBI or like they do some like... Yeah, criminal? I mean, it's a pretty intense, it's a pretty intense background check. And 
I think I remember having to put down where I lived for like the last 10 years and there's mm-hmm. a long questionnaire you have to fi- uh, fill out and then you go to an interview with a, yeah, an in-person um, interview. Yeah. yeah, an in-person interview with an immigration officer. Um, so it, it's just like a trusted uh, flyer program that then gives you privileges after you pay pay for it, of course. I didn't have um, to pay. That was cool because my credit card paid for it. Ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. But um, basically then when you uh, get to the immigration area, there's usually, depending on the airport, they have different lines. Sometimes it's citizens and residents and Mm non-citizens are like split up into different lines. Um, And then there's the global entry line where like basically there's not a lot of people who have global entry. So it's usually just a very short line and it's just really quick. And then as we said, there's like these kiosks, so like Automaten in German. Um, And yeah, you just don't really have to undergo all the questioning. I mean, yeah. even as a as a green card holder, I haven't. They didn't really ask me a lot of questions anymore ever since I've had the green card. Yeah. But still, you have to line up, and it might take a while. So exactly, that's it's really also funny too that like depending on the where the planes are coming from, sometimes the lane for U.S. citizens is longer than for the non-U.S. citizens. Like yeah. I think like <laughs> if you come back from Mexico. Mm-hmm. Like from Cancun or something, then you're gonna the American line is gonna be super long compared to the other one. So I can see that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got I got super lucky once when I landed in Cincinnati. And like, there were three flights coming in from uh, Mexico at the time, so there mm-hmm. was a really, really, really long line, and I just walked past all of them. It was a great feeling. <laughs> but yeah, it's a boss move. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, guys. Exactly. Um, Sucks yeah. to suck. So, I mean, in our situation, it really makes sense to have that. And, yeah, I just, like, didn't have it for a while because I didn't really want to, like, undergo all the process. But then I got this credit card and I was like, oh, it's free. And I was like, you know what? I should finally do do this. And then it took a while, though. I uh, sent in the application in June. And I didn't hear back until October. So it took, like, over four months for processing. And then it was really Mm -hmm. difficult to get an an in-person appointment. You can also do the in-person interview at your point of entry yeah. at the airport you can i tried to do that as well uh in boston oh yeah and of course that day their machine wasn't working properly so then i couldn't oh man okay it was it was very annoying i even think i may have told that story in the podcast maybe i, don't know. I just forgot <laughs> i apologize <laughs> <Who knows>? no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but, but so yeah, then no, i just uh, you and i i think both did the interview at the cincinnati airport and yeah. that was i mean the interview itself was super chill and easy and quick it was just kind of difficult for me at least at the time to get an appointment yeah but yeah, i got lucky yeah but yeah <laughs> so Very, that's well, that. cool and, then, <laughs> and now you're back in cincinnati i am and you also just came back from a trip you went skiing so how was yes, that? yes i did yeah it was really really fun i was super happy it was my first time skiing this season i don't know why i didn't go skiing more often this year first uh, and last time probably because it's yeah, March now. Definitely. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I regret not doing it at more times, but it was mm-hmm. really, really fun. I was in Schladming, which is in Austria. It's like a two and a half hour drive from Munich. I went with mm-hmm. some friends. Uh, Niklas was there, for example. Oh, um, and Heen? A, Heen was also on our podcast Heen, before. Yeah, Heen was also on the podcast. He was also there. Um, and then, yeah, so it was a group of us from Munich and then Niklas from Northern Germany, but he was in Munich. And then a couple of our Austrian friends as well. So it was a group of nine of us. We had a nice Airbnb. It was really cool. Uh, we had a sauna in the Airbnb, which was super nice. That is next level. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. And you could see some of the mountains while you were in the sauna. Yeah. Damn. Very, very okay. Nice. It was it was a fun trip. Um, but yeah, did a lot of skiing, went to a Tama, which to be honest, I don't even know how we say that in English. It's like a thermal bath, but like I, or like a thermal spring. But when we, when I hear that, I don't. My American mind doesn't really understand that. They usually it's, have it's, like a spa area. That yeah, it's like a spa there, right? basically. Yeah. Yeah, they have like these heated pools and then they have oftentimes like this place had one slide. Mm-hmm. Then they have outdoor pools as well. And like it was cool. You could sit in a heated pool outside and have a beautiful view of the mountains. We went there because it was raining. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's not the best weather for skiing. Well, let me uh, say one thing. The the whole yeah. thing about a Tama is usually that I don't know. They might also have artificially heated pools, but usually the whole thing yes. is that the pools are naturally heated. Yeah, it's a natural hot spring. Yeah, yeah. and that's what what I think. And correct me if I'm wrong here, Faye, but pretty much any place where you hear like Bad in front of it, as mm-hmm. far as a, a a name of the the city, like Bad Tölz, for example. Like Bad Tölz. I think this was Grimming, Bad Grimming, if mm-hmm. I'm not uh, mistaken. Um, there's a place I remember I went to uh, in Niederbayern, I believe, called Bad Griesbach. 
uh, like anything that has bod is because there was like a thermal. Is that right? I, that I right think so. it does sound, it does ring a bell. It seems right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure, but okay. I, I think you're right. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, so that, that was the point. They're naturally heated. Mm-hmm. So that was fun. Um, did some skiing. And then we also went sledding or like tobogganing, I guess. It's like. A true, I don't know that word. You don't know, like, you don't know the word toboggan? No, I know. I know that word, but like. Uh-huh. Not in that. I didn't know that you used it as a verb like that. I don't. I don't know if we do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just I would normally say sledding, but yeah. like we had wooden toboggans, you know. Okay. Because mm-hmm. like when I say sledding, I think of the type of sleds that I grew up on, that were very much like plastic, mm-hmm. <laughs> very plastic. Uh, but these were like your traditional wooden sleds, uh, or wooden toboggans. It was really cool. It was a seven meter stretch of, or seven meter, seven kilometer stretch, which is like, I don't know, three and a half miles, four miles that goes down the mountain. And there were four different, like in Germany, you call them Hütten, like little restaurants slash bars. Chalets. They weren't even necessarily that small. Yeah. Chalets. I don't think people would yeah. really know. Basically they're restaurants or bars along the path. Mm-hmm. Where you can have food and drinks and they have like après ski uh, music playing, which is like just, I don't, I don't need, these are things that don't <laughs> exist in the US. So I don't know how to describe them. Um, but we have some videos. I have some videos that maybe I can post uh, on Instagram so you guys can check those out. But it was really cool. So like the first stop basically was after 100 meters. You go down a short little 100 meter hill and then you're already at the first restaurant. Have your first have a couple drink. drinks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, because you were already out in the cold. Was the sledding route uh, separated from the skiing slopes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what there was about. one section where we had to cross over. Cross across the skiing slopes, but we went at night. So mm-hmm. it was cool. It was a lit path, but it was at nice. night. So there weren't many skiers of any. Okay. Only the people who were doing the sheet one. Yep. The, uh, who, uh, yeah. What do you call that? Like the Basically walking. climb up the mountain and yep. then sled down. Those are the craziest uh, or people. Ski down. I will never yeah. understand that. Props to everyone who does that. But I saw, because I also went skiing for one day. Did we record after that? We did record after that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think I already mentioned that, but we saw a bunch of those people and like yeah, i feel like that it's gotten more and more and more over like i feel like when i was a kid that didn't really exist i didn't see a lot of those people doing that when i was little but now it's like every other person that you see up there is like one of those uh Super crazy. Yeah. yeah it's crazy but yeah it was really really fun it was a nice time cool so you rented out your own little airbnb Got a lot of partying and skiing. I feel like that sounds yes. like the classical uh, yes. Urlaub. Played lots skiing of card vacation. games. I learned the game Kniffel. Oh, mm-hmm. Uh, for the first time, which I think it's called something different in Austria. Oh, yeah? Um, I'm trying to remember what they said it was. Does that not exist Grande, in, in the U.S.? I don't know the game Kniffel, no. It, it's kind of similar to Yahtzee, I think. Maybe that's what mm-hmm. it is. Is it Yahtzee? I think so. I, I always thought there was a name for it in... In English, now that I, now that we're talking about this, I'm like, oh wait, we were playing Yahtzee all weekend. <laughs> I didn't make the connection before, but yes, it's Yahtzee. Yeah, that's what's yeah, that's what's coming up when I Google it. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this is a game I don't know. No, of course I know Yahtzee, uh, but yeah, it sounds like <laughs> that's a good time. <laughs> that's okay. But yes, it was fun. It was fun. Cool, and you're also yeah, like. Fun about to go to your next vacation where it's yeah. co- the complete opposite basically life is good right now for me <laughs> i really can't complain um yet i am headed to madeira um on friday which will be really fun i'm going with uh, chloe uh the one friend one of the two french people that we interviewed um one of my friends here in munich um so you guys if you've been following along for a while have seen her mm-hmm. um but yeah we're going to madeira um for five days madeira for those of you who don't know is a portuguese island off the coast of africa kind of down near the canary islands um so it's gonna be really fun i'm really looking forward to it and a lot of people like the nickname for it is like the hawaii of europe um, oh really i have really never good. heard that yeah yeah interesting uh-huh. okay at least at least i've heard that from a couple people mm-hmm. um And there's lots of cool hiking and beaches, of course, because it's an island. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. The weather in Munich is supposed to be nice, too, but I won't be on the... I'm very happy to be in Madeira. Yeah, I'm jealous. Yeah. Enjoy it. (laughs) 
<laughs> so I'm sure I'll have lots of updates for that. But we did use the time while we were in Munich together to do a kind of a different episode from what we normally do for you guys. And if you follow us on Instagram, you probably have an idea of what it is. But on Instagram, we asked you guys if you had any questions for people in Munich. And what we did then was kind of easy German style, if you will, uh, went out onto the streets of Munich and asked the questions that you guys had to the Munich population. I think it was fun for both of us. Both of, both of us have done things like this before and gone. I mean, my job is talking to strangers. Yeah. So it wasn't like super, super awkward. And you've done a lot of these street interviews in the past. But yeah, for um, radio stations, especially for the more uh, boulevard or like, um, what do you say? Like the more easygoing radio stations that don't do yeah. like the super serious journalism in Munich. Um, I worked for yeah. Radio Gong and I basically had to when I was like an intern there. Um, I had basically had to do a street survey every single day um, about the most random topics. But it was yeah. actually I felt, felt like it was more difficult that day that we did it than it used to be like when I mm -hmm. used to do this. But I think it was because like the time of the day uh, we did it like yeah. on a Friday morning. So there were not a lot of people. Um, we did it in the Fußgängerzone, so in the pedestrian area. There were not a lot of people there who were actually locals. A lot of them were tourists. And then there were two. Yeah. A demonstrations going on at the same time the strike <laughs> really bad timing union strike and also fridays for future which is like the climate activist uh, movement mm -hmm. um so a lot of people were there for that and a lot of people also came into munich for that and, yeah. and i think a lot of the people that just like live in munich weren't in the pedestrian zone on a Friday morning because exactly. <laughs> they were at work. So um, it was a little bit difficult to find people, but it was really cool. And actually also we did mention that already in the, in the last episode because you just like almost mentioned it as if it's this like surprise, but we already talked about it in the last oh, episode. Oh, we did. Because we oh, reported no. the last episode right after You're we right. came back from You're the survey. Right. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, so today we're finally going to listen to all of the answers that we got from the people on the streets and um, just kind of like go through the questions and talk about give it a little bit. Give our mustard to it as well. Exactly. Give our must give our two cents <laughs> to it. Okay, so we're going to show the clips on YouTube. For those of you who are listening on the audio streaming platforms, we're going to tell you what the question was. But then unfortunately, the answers are all going to be in German. Uh, if you want to see subtitles, you can go over to YouTube and see the subtitles there. Or we're going to just try and summarize it for you afterwards. But for those of you who are learning German and want to practice it, this is probably a good chance because this is very authentic material <laughs> like <Yes>. people say <laughs> no one was trying to speak slowly for us we weren't trying to speak particularly slow um for those of you watching on youtube you'll see some some of the clips are just of people's feet um that's yeah. because <laughs> we we didn't want to force people to be on camera if they didn't feel comfortable with it um so yeah some uh, of yes, them just like in typical just... german fashion didn't want to give away their privacy. Um, that's like a big thing, data protection. Um, and so we just filmed onto the ground instead while yeah. we talked to them. But that's just the explanation for that. Yeah, so the first question was, was ist euer Lieblingsort in München? So what's your favorite spot or favorite place in Munich? Oh, Englischer Garten, also ja. bei mir auf jeden Fall wäre es was Grünes, irgendein Park. Ja. ja, Englischer Garten oder vielleicht Westpark, würde ich sagen. Irgendwie ja. sowas Entspanntes, Lockeres. Ja. Was trinken gehen, essen gehen, so, ja. so ein Ort, würde ich sagen, oder? Ja, würde Bei dir ich auch Schwabing sagen. vielleicht? Von ja, früher? Schwabing. Von früher war halt Schwabing <lacht> immer das, wo die Jungen ja. hingegangen sind. Gell? Also da sind wir nie so Fußgängerzone ja, ja. oder so gewesen. <lacht> der Odeonsplatz. Ähm, Sommer, tatsächlich hier die Oper direkt. Weil okay. Stuf, hier ist im Sommer dann öfters eine Bar und dann kann man mhm. sitzen. Und sonst... Ja, im Max Vorstadt, das Studentenviertel tatsächlich. Ja. Was, was machst du an der, an der Max Vorstadt? Die Bars. Die Bars, ja. Hast du eine Lieblingsbar da? Kannst, kannst du irgendetwas Ja, irgendwas ich hatte ein Lieblingsrestaurant, es hat zugemacht. Okay. Und jetzt gerade so auf der Suche nach was Neues. Ah, okay, okay. Mein Lieblingsort, äh, Pasing. Pasing? Pasing. Und ja. was gefällt dir am Pasing so? Es äh, ist ein bisschen außerhalb, nicht zu stressig und Parsing-Arkaden sind auch ganz cool, bekommt man alles, was man will. So ein kleiner eigener Ortsteil in München. Ja. Ja. Marienplatz. Ja, ich denke so Talkirchen Richtung. Okay. Ja, Isa. So that was a lot at once, so I guess here's just like a quick summary of what I remember that they just said. But generally, the main spots that people like were Odeonsplatz, Marienplatz, uh, the English Garden as well, 
Um, because someone said that they like all of the greenery that's there. Mm -hmm. um, it's the a parks. really, really big garden. The parks. Yeah. I mean, we mentioned um, the English garden a lot of times on our podcast. Exactly. I think. So even people who've never even heard of Munich, <laughs> have never been to Munich, should probably know the English garden by now or what the English yeah, garden yeah. is. Yeah. And then there was also a comment about Talkirchen. Like Isar, which is the river that goes through Munich. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people just really like the nature. The nature. Nature parts. And, that's, and then... Also, pausing, which really surprised me when he said pausing because it's like out in the middle of nowhere, basically. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's in the west of Munich. It's But he yeah. said it's kind of like its own little thing. And that's very true. It's like um, yes. a lot of these neighborhoods of Munich, if you will, used to be their own city or town or village and then mm -hmm. as Munich grew that's like the case for a lot of European cities that the way that they grew they just basically kept swallowing all these other yeah. towns and made them part of Munich and Pazing mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure is one of those and it still feels like that as he said there's like it's, it has its own mall and its own little yeah. like uh, center like a square yeah. that's like the, uh -huh. the center of the place so yeah I think maybe he lived out there yeah, I That's, assume I think, so. That was, yeah. that was the only uh, explanation for <laughs> but me. But I, I, I agree. Like, it's it's nice out there if you don't yeah. want to have to go into the chaos of the city and yeah. still, like, have all the restaurants and stores and everything. And True. there's, like, you know, doctors. There's all the infrastructure is there. And you're kind of mm -hmm. close to a lot of the lakes out in, uh, on the western also side true. of Munich. So. Yep. <laughs> Not that bad. I mean, I to be fair, I haven't been depositing that often. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe once or twice. Mm -hmm. So, But then also Schwabing was mentioned mm -hmm. and the Max Vorstadt. Also, someone said the opera, which is really close to Odeonsplatz and Marienplatz. It's like right be between the two. But yeah, those are all some places that people mentioned. Yeah, and Schwabing and Max Vorstadt are just two like neighborhoods that are close mm -hmm. to the center. Um, Schwabing, especially the one woman, uh, she said that she lived in Munich when she was younger, but she now doesn't live there anymore. Um, and that's where they used to go when she was young. And that was like, Schwabing was like a big, vibrant yeah. part of Munich for a long time. And it still is, but it's just become a little bit more quiet like yeah, yeah more residential more like a lot of like, more like coffee shops and mm -hmm. latte macchiato moms is kind of like the yes, thing. <laughs> yes. Um, and max vorstadt is where the university is which mm -hmm. means that there's lots of university bars restaurants lots of young people yeah. go out there and that's what he said it's too cool. is that he likes the bars there exactly i think that we basically covered everything that everyone said to that yeah, well, or about now that question. But what about you, Faley? <laughs> what is your favorite? What are your favorite places in Munich? Or your maybe we say top three. I was gonna ask you first. Um, ah, okay. See, I didn't really prepare for this. I knew that we should talk about it in the episode, <laughs> but I didn't make a list. Um, do you have a list ready? I don't have a list ready per se, but I definitely know what my favorite spots okay. are. Hit me. Um, <laughs> my number one is the English Garden, mm -hmm. especially in the summer. It's just the vibes are great. I love. The thing that I love about Munich is how integrated nature is into the city. You don't have to go far to really feel like you're no longer in a big city. Um, and the English Garden is a reason for that. And also the Isa. There are mm -hmm. lots of places along the Isa, like especially near the place. It's called the Reichenbachbrücke. Um, there's a really nice area where you can sit out on the river uh, in the summer, especially. Other than that, I really like Odeonsplatz uh, mm -hmm. with the, what is it, the Feldherrenhalle? Yeah. Uh, that it just is a really pretty place with the um, residents right next to it as well. And then the only other thing I would add is the Hofgarten. I'm surprised no one mentioned the Hofgarten. Yeah, it's kind of, it's not part of Odeonsplatz, of course, but it's like right there. So maybe, yeah, the one woman exactly. who said it's that. Like, <laughs> meant it's that all as in well. that general, general area. But the Hofgarten is really nice because it's, it's kind of, kept in by it's like squared in or blocked in by a couple of buildings the residence on one side it's the Staatskanzlei on the other uh which is the um how do we say it in english uh, the attorney general's office mm -hmm. for the state of bavaria it's just very pretty buildings and a really pretty garden it has like this big gazebo in the center where sometimes you'll see people dancing and the yeah. music and there's normally some people playing uh bocce ball or pitonk depending mm -hmm. on a uh, what you call it. Um, so it's, I like the vibes there a lot. Yeah, for sure. So those and those the would Hof, be my top. Hofgarten, what does that translate to? Like the courtyard? Yeah, the like the, yeah. I would almost say almost say like the royal court, courtyard. Yeah, though, it's because it's connected it's, it's, to the residence, which used to exactly. be like the palace that mm -hmm. um, was like, I think the winter residence for, you know, the, yeah. the royals that uh, ruled in Bavaria and in Munich. 
Um, and mm-hmm. so that was their backyard, basically. Not too shabby. Yeah. And it's actually no, <laughs> connected to the English garden, too. So, like, yeah. you can then from there just, like, walk or take your bike right into the English garden. That was actually mm-hmm. my... Um, way to get to university for the longest time like whenever the weather was nice enough um so like usually in the in the zoma semester Mm -hmm. uh, during spring and summer i would take my bike all the way and i didn't live like downtown but i would take my bike all the way in downtown and i would cross in from like sentlinger tor then like go through marienplatz that was like when there was still a street going through marienplatz um, they closed that up now. You can't drive through it anymore, but you could at the uh, time was, with like really? taxis. And so right where um, it goes over to uh, Viktualienmarkt and Tal, okay. there is like there was a street basically separating Marienplatz and then the old Rathaus, the old town hall. Ah, uh, okay. Um, so yeah, I mean you s- the, you still have the street going that yep. direction, but the it's. Right by Marienplatz, they closed that up, so it's all like the pedestrian zone keeps going. But anyways, I would yeah. go through there, I would go to Odeon's Platz, and then I would go right into the Hofgarten, and then um, cross into the English Garden, oh, and that's then a like nice drive. ride by that's the a really nice ride. by some of the other surfers because there's a couple more like surfer yeah. waves on like one of these little uh, rivers mm-hmm. um, or creeks. And then my university building was actually kind of right next to um, the Chinese Tower in the English Garden. Because, like, uh, LMU has, you know, buildings all over the city because we don't really have a campus. So whenever they grew as a university, they just uh, acquired more buildings all over the city, basically, and just made that, like, their yeah. new faculty of blah, 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 like, faculty for something. Like, this one yeah. was for communications and political mm-hmm. science. So, yeah, that was always really nice. Um, just a little story from my previous life when I didn't live <laughs> in the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other uh, favorite spots in Munich that we didn't mention? Dude, it's so hard for me. Um, something because I feel like I love all of that. Like I love all yeah. of the above and I have so many different memories and associations with all of these different things because um, mm-hmm. I kind of spent my whole life in Munich and I have so. Yeah, yeah just I love it all. But um, I definitely like downtown like the. The Altstadt. I like the pedestrian area when it's, especially when it's not too crowded. When it's not not yeah. a Saturday afternoon. I love the city hall. I never really appreciated mm-hmm. it before I moved away, but yeah, now I really absolutely cool. love it and the old city hall as well. I love the English Garden and Hofgarten for sure. I also really like just going down like Ludwigstraße or riding my bike mm-hmm. down there, and just coming by the university, like the main building of the university, where like there's the two fountains and people usually yeah. chill on the grass there. And that, you know, that has memories for me because that's what I mm-hmm. used to do. And I also really like um, the Olympic Park. That's one thing that hasn't been mentioned yet. Yeah, that's right. Olympia Park, because um, I grew up more like closely to that. And so that is not as historic. It was built in the 1970s for the Olympics when they took place in Munich. But um, it's really pretty. It's like a great place for just recreational activities. Yeah. It's a great up. place to watch the sunset too. Exactly. If you go up onto the Olympiaberg um, and you have like this kind of unique architecture there because mm-hmm. they have these tent buildings, tent roofs that they yeah. did um, on top of the stadium and everything. Other than that, I mean, I just like a lot of the stuff also around Munich that isn't necessarily like downtown, like a lot of the Mm -hmm. lakes. I know that later on people also mentioned Starnberg a lot, but also Wörthsee, Ammersee, like all of those lakes are great. So nice. Yeah. One thing that I didn't add, but you made me think of this when you were talking about just memories of like sitting outside. The Pinakotheken is a really nice area Mm -hmm. as well with really big. So the Pinakotheken, it's a group of museums uh, in Munich and they have these really nice big open spaces, open like yards or or gardens in front of them where Mm -hmm. people set up volleyball. It's kind of like a park feeling, Um, but that's also really nice, especially in the summer. Yeah. And one more thing that hasn't been mentioned is Nymphenburg. I really like uh, oh, yeah. Schloss Nymphenburg and the Schlossgarten or Park. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you guys are ever in Munich and um, don't know about this, there's also an area that's a little bit north of Munich that's called Schleisheim. It's a town and it also mm-hmm. has a, a castle or not castle. I always want to say castle because Schloss castle, but yeah. in English you would say palace. Um, yeah. That is kind of similar to Nymphenburg and it's not as well-known and uh, I've never crowded. Been. So yeah, you can check that out as well. And they have a really li- nice lake out there as well. And the Regatta Strecke, which was also built for the Olympics. It's great for like inline skating. Um, mm. You can also swim in there if you want. Um, yeah, that's Good also to a know. cool place. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, it's, not, it's not like super near to where you live though. 
you'd have yeah. to get out there first. <laughs> yeah. So that was more than a favorite, but we're not going to spend that much time giving our feedback it's, on all of these questions because no, some of them are very direct. Difficult. <laughs> but it's hard to choose one. But okay. this is your opportunity to get all of our Munich knowledge and all of the people from Munich, uh, not all of the people, but the people that we spoke to, uh, yes. get knowledge from them. Also, I want to say a big thank you and shout out to everyone who did take yes. the time to talk to us that day because um, everyone was kind of like in a rush and it was kind of, as we mm. said, kind of difficult to get people. But those of you who actually took the time to talk to us, uh, we really appreciate it. It was great meeting you all. And we didn't ask everyone all the questions. So like mm -hmm. some people only answered like a few of the questions because we didn't want to keep them for like 10 minutes. Um, so you'll hear different voices throughout the different questions. So the next question is, wie viel Miete uh, zahlt ihr? Uh, or how much is your rent? Which is kind of a, an important question to ask in Munich, because Munich is known to be one of the most expensive cities to live in, especially for rent. And it's also difficult to find some, like yes. find a place to live. Warm, 1650. Okay. Uh, 66 <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 650 Euro. Is this a WG or is this a uh, Nee, it's a Einzimmerwohnung. Yeah. Yeah, I had auch sehr Glück. Also yeah. It's not normal. I have a family, I'm a owner. That's natürlich auch sehr interesting. <laughs> das gibt's nicht so oft natürlich in München. Können Sie oder wollen Sie auch sagen, wo in München? In der Theresienstraße. Uh, 1600, glaube ich. 1600, Warm. genau. Warm, genau. Yeah. Und für wie viel äh, Quadratmeter? Uh, 83. Oh, okay, eigentlich, eigentlich ganz gut. Aber ja, aber es ist Altbau, mhm. kein Fahrradstellplatz, keine Garage, schlimme Nachbarn, oh, okay. ganz schlimmer Hausmeister und oh. ganz feuchter Keller. Oh nein. Okay. Und keine Sonne. Das geht natürlich gar nicht. Also Schattenseite. Ja, ja. Ja. Und Lindwurmstraße plus Notfallwegen alle zwei Minuten plus laute Kneipe unten. Ah, verstehe. Davor. Viel günstiger, die andere sonnige Seite, aber nur zwei Zimmer. Okay. Also wegen dem Kind praktisch. Und jetzt suchen wir natürlich wieder eine hellere Wohnung, weil ich es nicht mehr aushalten kann. Okay, so there were a lot of numbers in this one, so we actually had to pause for a bit and pre prepare everything and write it all down and also translate some of the, the sizes, or not translate, but convert, convert some of the sizes yeah. um, from square meters to square feet, just for those Americans who are listening. Um, but one of them said that they pay 1,650 euros for 66 square meters, which is pretty good. And the 66 square meters in square feet is 710. It's um, not someone... cheap, though. I thought that was like, that was definitely a Munich price in my yeah, mind. Yeah, I guess so. He said Warmmiete. So that's like yes. kind of a different concept in the U.S. at least and Germany. Warmmiete usually means the rent plus... So warm rent. Yeah, warm rent plus like certain utilities. So warm rent usually means the rent itself. That would be referred to as the cold rent. So that's usually what you talk about when in the US you just talk about your rent. You always mean the cold rent. Um, and then it also includes the costs for heating and water and like garbage, just like things like that. Removal Gar and stuff. Yeah. Garbage removal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then electricity would be on top of that and Wi-Fi. Exactly. Just for context. Yeah. Uh, the next person said that they pay 650 uh, euros for 27 square meters, which uh, 27 square meters is 290 square feet. Um, and Faley commented that that's really good. Yeah, it's not that expensive because that, he said that's an one, a bedroom apartment. Which yeah. probably means studio apartment. Studio. We have to try. <laughs> it's, like so, it's so hard to keep it all straight. Because <laughs> like Einzimmerwohnung usually is a studio when yeah. you speak English. Because if if in the US at least you say you have a one bedroom apartment, it would kind of imply that your bedroom is separate and you have a separate exactly. like living area. But in German, that's not the case. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, for like something that's completely separate, I felt like that was a good price. Because like if you have mm -hmm. a shared like a room like you do in a shared flat. Yeah. That would kind of be a normal price, I feel like, um, right? Or maybe, yeah. 27 square meters, 650 for 27 Still square cheap. meters is Still really cheap. good. Yeah, that's true. 27 uh, meter, for example, square meters I, is big. I mean, I, I, I pay 670 yeah. um, euros for 16 square meters for my mm -hmm. room. But they're also, we have a big living room as well. Yeah. Um, so that also kind of goes towards that just to give you a comparison so for 16 versus uh 
um, 27, we're paying about the same, a difference yeah. of 20. Yeah, and he has so, said yeah. that he was really lucky in that regard. So maybe exactly. he had connections or something. Okay, so then... Then we had someone who said that they pay 1,600 for 83 square meters. That's a pretty uh, good price, but she was kind of unhappy with her living situation. Exactly. She said, this was a longer clip. <laughs> she said that um, it's it's very dark. Uh, she doesn't have great neighbors. It's loud. So there were a lot of reasons why she The basement wanted is to really be, like humid. Yeah. And she, uh, she lived there with, I think, her husband and her child. Um, mm-hmm. So she was looking for something else, even though she said the price, of course, is good, but it's not acceptable with the living conditions anymore. Exactly. So... And then the other gentleman that we interviewed doesn't have rent because he owns an apartment. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, quite um, rare, I would say, to find in in, in Munich. Uh, And he has a really good location for it as well, the Theresienstrasse. Yeah, which is Um, close to the university area. Yeah, Yeah. So, I mean, he didn't even say if it's just an apartment. He might own a whole building and rent it out he didn't say that <laughs> <laughs> true that's that's a good point he could own the entire thing so yeah good for him um but that was actually kind of cool that we found someone because i actually made a whole video about that last year that in germany it's just not as common to be um to own your own own real estate yeah. to own your home uh, your house it's something that germans don't have as a priority quite as much as americans do but also it's because it's kind of hard to accomplish because real estate is really expensive. So it's really hard to, um, you know, afford a house or an apartment. And also mortgages work different and are sometimes yeah. harder to get. And also Germans don't really like to take a lot of risks in their life. So um, that was actually yeah, a really good catch that we um, talked to someone who actually owns instead of renting. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to give you guys my information then on what I pay too, <laughs> just to be another uh, voice amongst things. I, I mentioned what I pay for my room itself, but the apartment, it's a vegay, so we also, I mean, it all goes towards the rent for the apartment. Um, and our uh, VAM mita, so the warm rent, is 2,256 euros for 120 square meters, which is 1,291 square feet. Which is also really good. Uh, yeah, you got like, lucky. <laughs> we got very lucky. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, so as actually, you said, you have a huge living room. I've I've yeah. seen a lot of like VGs in Munich in my in my time, and I've never seen a, first of all a VG with a living room at all is like pretty cool and luxurious yeah. to have. And your guys' living room is enormous. <laughs> it's huge. I mean, I think the apartment used to be two separate apartments, and they. Tore, tore down a wall to make it a one big one. Mm-hmm. We have two bathrooms with showers. Um, we have four bedrooms. We have a big living room and then a small kitchen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but just to give you guys a, a, some reference points. And I don't know, Feli, do you remember what you used to pay for your apartment in Munich? Um, this was like over six years ago. So I know yeah. that the rent for that apartment has gone up also. Um, and I'm, my brother actually lives in that apartment and he told me the other day what they pay, but I don't remember now. But I think our warm rent was 800 for 50 square meters. Yeah, that's really good. <laughs> so, yeah, I think the cold rent was like 650 or so and then warm rent was 800. For, um, 50, for 50 square meters. Yeah, so it was one bedroom, one living room kitchen bathroom and 50 square meters is 538 square feet just yeah FYI. and it had a small balcony that's nice yeah we don't nice. have a balcony in mine yeah so yeah those uh those were the details on that question let's move on to the next one which is what is your favorite munich beer oh and that's a big one yeah when augustina natürlich yeah, get it <laughs> Ja. Es gibt ja dann auch oft die Konkurrenz zwischen Augustina und Tegernseer. Und Chiemseer, Tegernseer, Augustina, das ist so, genau, die drei. Ja, aber bei euch wäre es Augustina. Ja, Tegernseer. Tegernseer, da bin ich bei dir. Ich würde sagen Franziskaner. Franziskaner, okay, das höre ich tatsächlich nicht so oft. Ja, das ist Augustina. Stimme ich ganz zu. 
Ich trinke kein Bier, nee. aber ich, äh, mein Mann liebt ja den Paulana Zwickel. Und den habe ich neulich zum ersten Mal in meinem Leben probiert. Und es war gar nicht so schlecht, muss ich sagen. <lacht> Dann werden wir doch zum Getränk Ja, Mai, also ja, ne, figurtechnisch lohnt es sich nicht. Da bleibe ich bei meinem Prosecco. Das verstehe ich auch. Prosecco ist eigentlich auch sehr münchnerisch, würde ich sagen. Ja, klar. Also, ja, ja. In der Schickerie. Ja, 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 gut, aber ich trinke ja nicht so, nicht so schick. Nicht so, so, there are lots of breweries in Munich. Um, and I think we've talked about this somewhat also with... Oktoberfest and how they all have their tents at Oktoberfest. Um, but the main beers that were, they got shout outs from uh, the people that we interviewed. Hold on, I gotta interfere first. Okay. One thing that we didn't even notice when we did the recording is that some of these beer, well, not some of these beers that were picked, but that were mentioned, like Tegansea and Kimsea, that's not technically a Munich beer. That doesn't actually count. That's actually true. That's actually true. <laughs> but it's so common in Munich to drink yeah. these beers because they're from right like outside of Munich. Well, yeah. Kimsee, I guess, is a little bit further, but it's kind of like it's all Bavarian and those are very common beers to drink. So yeah. technically, though, though like yeah, Tegansea right. and Kimsee wouldn't get a tent at Oktoberfest because only real Munich yeah. breweries get yeah, a yeah. tent there. So <laughs> I just wanted I to needed, mention that. Then I, I was going to say that I need to change the answer that I was going to say. So people said, like you said, Augustina, Tegansea, um, Kimsea. I don't think anyone actually picked Kimsea, though. They just mentioned oh, that that's also like one that a lot of Munich people like to Which drink. I would agree with. I don't like Kimsea. Mm. Um, and then there was Paulana as well. Paulana Paula and Franciscana. And Franciscana, which I said surprised me because I only really know of Franciscana in the context of Weissbier. Yeah. So like these wheat beers. Um, so I was surprised to hear that as a response for sure. But do you have anything else to add to that, Feli? You said in the video what your favorite was or who Augustina, you were agreeing with. Augustina, obviously. And then you're not Team Augustina. Well, if it comes down... I, I, hey, I buy a lot of Augustina. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's... A very good beer. I, if I had the choice between Augustina and Tegansea, I would probably go for Tegansea. Mm -hmm. um, but to answer the question, what's my favorite Munich beer? Augustina, for sure. Okay. Cool. I think at Oktoberfest, when it comes to beer tents, my favorite, because like at Oktoberfest, um, they also have different kind of beer. They have mm -hmm. the Fest beer. Um, yeah. And then obviously, like every brewery has either one or several of these tents. Obviously, they're not really tents. They're beer halls. Yeah. But um, the one that's my favorite by atmosphere and also one of my favorite Fest beers is actually Hakap Shor. But I don't yeah. usually drink Hakap Shor in everyday life unless if it's Radler because I think they have good, ra uh, good yep, Radler. I would 100% agree with that. 100%. So, yeah. <laughs> cool. So the next question was, where would you live if not in Munich? In the winter in Starnberg. Da haben Sie aber noch nichts. Da haben Sie auch schon was. Ja, also am Starnberger See, weil da komme ich her. Ah, okay, okay. Also ich habe früher ja in Berlin gewohnt, in Hamburg. Ähm, war toll, aber ich war jung. Und ich weiß wirklich nicht, was ich jetzt machen würde. Ich komme ja nicht aus Deutschland, ich bin gebürtige Slowenin und wir haben jetzt ein Haus in Istrien und uns zieht es eher ans Meer, muss ich ehrlich sagen. Aber wir haben ein schulpflichtiges Kind und deswegen, ja, ja. aber die Ferien, in den Ferien sind wir nie in München, nie, nie, nie. Also da flüchten wir immer Richtung Meer. Das beantwortet und, dann auch die Frage, ja. wo Sie am liebsten Urlaub machen, weil das wäre meine nächste Frage gewesen. Gut, also Urlaub überall, aber... Jetzt bietet es sich halt so an, dass wir dann in den Ferien in Estrien sind. Vermutlich am Bodensee, okay. weil ich daherkomme ah, ursprünglich. Okay. Und es ist eine ganz schöne Gegend, bisschen grüner und ländlicher. Ja, ja. So this one was interesting, Feli. I was expecting some different responses, if I'm uh, honest. Mm -hmm. Because what people said were Starnberg, which is a city very close to Munich. Um, Bodensee, which is also not that far away. It's on the other side of Germany in the uh, in the west, but also still not that far away. Um, we also had someone say uh, that they are originally from Slovenia and um, have a house in Istria, which is in Croatia, um, and that they prefer they would go towards the the water or towards the sea. She also said she used to live in Hamburg and Berlin, so kind of like yep. in the other big cities. But I'm surprised by how few responses we got that like that everyone wanted to stay in Germany. Yeah. I don't know why. I, I don't know if I'm in my bubble 
Um, but the fact that everyone's immediately uh, said said German, something in Germany. Okay, so I think the way that we phrased the question was like, where would you most likely be living if it was in Munich? Mm -hmm. I don't, at least when I asked people, I think that's how okay. I phrased it. I didn't really like phrase it in a way like, what would be your dream place uh, to live? Okay. It's more like, I think people thought in a more realistic way, like uh -huh. what is, if I didn't live here, what would be the second most likely place for me to live? Okay. Um, and so I think a lot of people just don't that think that sense, then. moving abroad would be that realistic for them. Yeah. Or also probably for a lot of them, not really something that they want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. But those were the responses. I guess we've kind of answered that in the sense that we don't live where we're from. Yeah. <laughs> but I think if you were to ask me right now, where would I live if not in Munich? I would probably say somewhere further south. Um, in terms somewhere... of another country. Yes. In terms of another country. I probably like... wouldn't necessarily. I don't know. Spain. Mm -hmm. Maybe Italy. Croatia is also super nice. Yeah. Um, something on, on the coast, I would say, is how yeah. I feel. Yeah. What about you? Sure. If, if you weren't living in... Well, actually, no, we'll save this question for what if you weren't living in Cincinnati, because we would like to do a sister episode of this when I'm in the U.S., um, and we can... We'll go. We'll answer some questions there. But. Okay. Could, then I have a, a couple more weeks to think yeah. about it. <laughs> think exactly. about my answer. Well, one thing that I wanted to mention about Stamberg because two people actually mentioned that, which was yeah. kind of funny. Um, Stamberg is by Lake Stamberg, so like the Stamberger See, which is I feel like one of the places that people might maybe heard of sometimes maybe in historical context. Like if you are a Zissi fan like myself, that's where she was from. The Princess of Bavaria, oh, Empress of Austria. She grew up in Possenhofen. You can still visit their um, their residence, their uh, palace. I've actually um, never seen Sissi, so. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you're missing out on something. Um, but Stamberg is definitely known among Munich people. It's known to be one of those places, together with maybe like Tegernsee, where the rich Munich people move to once they're kind of done in the city, once they've made all their money um, or people <laughs> even buy like a weekend yeah. house there or something like that, like a second residence. So um, I don't know. That's kind of just known as like a very rich area. And if you yes. have a house at Lake Starnberg, you're you're, you're doing, doing well. just fine in life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just exactly. wanted to mention that for context. But I mean, I can understand it. It's a great, great place. I think it would be a little too crowded for my preference. Like if I were mm -hmm. to move somewhere, if I were to like buy a house at a lake, Stamberg is really packed. Yeah, that's the thing. But, yeah. The next question is, do you speak dialect? Um, we've talked about dialect enough on our channel that you guys have an understanding of this. So a bit. Also... Zu meiner Jugend war Dialekt, das war so 70er Jahre, war das total verpönt. Also da ist man ausgelacht worden, wenn man so ein bisschen bayerisch gesprochen hat. Ja. Und von daher ist da auch nicht mehr so viel jetzt. Und jetzt heutzutage gibt es Situationen, wo Sie eher Dialekt sprechen oder eher Hochdeutsch? Ja klar, mit der Verwandtschaft oder so spricht man immer anders. Oder mit den Münchner Freunden, wir haben noch einen Münchner Freundeskreis, spricht man vielleicht anders wie jetzt... Doch, das merke ich auch, dass ihr da viel mehr Bay Bayerisch ja, spricht als jetzt ja, bei uns in Landsberg. Ja. Aber in da Landsberg ist ja schon ein bisschen Schwäbisch. Also, wie wir nach Landsberg gezogen ja, sind, hat man ja. meinen Hoppala. Die reden ja ganz anders wie in München. Gell? Das ist schon, obwohl es nur so 50 Kilometer sind, aber es ist eine ganz andere Sprache. Fast. Das haben Sie jetzt aber nicht adaptiert inzwischen. Vielleicht ein paar Ausdrücke schon, ja. Das ist klar. Das macht man automatisch, so, glaube ich. Bei dir ist aber eher nicht so. Nee, also ich habe eine Zeit lang in Berlin gewohnt und da haben viele gesagt, dass ich, weil ich dieses R so rolle, dass man es raus hat, aber sonst würde ich sagen nein. Ja, bei mir war es auch, ich habe mal in Hamburg gewohnt und dann kam irgendwie auch, naja, du sagst halt so bestimmte Ausdrücke, ja. dass ich immer das statt das gesagt habe. Genau, genau, so Kleinigkeiten, ja, 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 ja. ja. genau, so Abkürzungen. Genau. Sie sprechen ein bisschen Dialekt, höre ich natürlich gleich raus. Ja. Ähm, sprechen Sie auch viel Dialekt im Alltag und wenn ja, gibt es Situationen, wo Sie eher Dialekt sprechen und eher Hochdeutsch? Nee, eigentlich nicht. Ich bleibe mein Bayerisch treu. <lacht> Alles klar. Also auch jetzt, wenn Sie irgendwie in bestimmten Situationen sind, Sie versuchen es nicht irgendwie zu verstecken oder eher... Nein, nein, ich verstecke mich wirklich nicht. <lacht> ja, sehr gut. Und da du ein bisschen außerhalb äh, herkommst, ähm, kannst du Dialekt? Nee. Okay, kannst du nicht. Schwäbisch eigentlich. Ja. Ein bisschen so, aber ja. kaum, kaum. Okay. Ja. Und gibt es bestimmte Situationen, in denen du Schwäbisch sprichst oder lieber Hochdeutsch? Oder wie schaut es bei dir aus, die Mischung? Eigentlich Hochdeutsch, was Dinge. Ich versuche nur Hochdeutsch <lacht> zu sprechen, weil das, äh, ja, Schwäbisch ist dann schon ein bisschen, gefällt mir nicht so. <lacht> Auch okay. wenn ich von daher komme. Okay. Ja. 
Okay, so um, yeah, a lot of them kind of gave different answers. I think honestly, most of them actually said that they do speak some kind of dialect, except for one guy. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we didn't ask every single person that we met that day. We only asked a few of them. Um, but the first two um, ladies, uh, it was mother and daughter. Um, the mother said that she definitely used to speak more Bavarian dialect um, and that she still does it when she communicates with her Munich friends. She doesn't live in Munich anymore. She now lives more in the Allgäu area where they speak a little bit more Swabian. Um, but that uh, when she was young, it was actually not, um, what's the word? Yeah, like, like it kind of had was... a bad reputation a little bit mm -hmm. to speak dialect. So they wouldn't really try to do it as much at the time. Her daughter said that she doesn't really speak dialect, but she definitely rolls her R very strongly. Yeah. And that's when she lived in Berlin, people always pointed that out, that that makes her sound very Bavarian. Um, then, yeah, there was another uh, older gentleman who definitely spoke Bavarian. He didn't speak like crazy strong dialect. It was more like the Munich version of yeah. where I, I would call it Münchnerisch. Like, Which is also funny because, uh, like, when he said, no, I don't, he said it very high, like, very standard German. <laughs> like, saying nicht instead of net. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> but we have a few other answers of him where he says net. Like, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And he said that, because um, I asked them a little bit, like, if there's different situations where they speak more standard German, more dialect. And um, the first two girls, the mother definitely said that with her Munich friends, she speaks more Bavarian dialect that she would in the Allgäu area where she lives now, the a Bavarian gentleman said that he just always speaks the same way no matter the situation. And then we had one guy who said he doesn't speak dialect. Then the other guy who said he's from Lake Constance also said that he usually were to speak Swabian is what he said, right? He said that he can speak some Swabian, but he yeah. tries to speak standard German because he doesn't necessarily like the sound of Swabian. Yeah. So, I mean, but technically that means he can. He just doesn't like yeah. to do it. He didn't do it with us. He didn't show us his uh, yes. dialect skills. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of you and I, I think people already know, you yeah. definitely picked up on a lot of Bavarian. In some ways, you speak more Bavarian than, than I do. Um, I grew up in Munich, so like I'm familiar with the Bavarian dialect. Some people in my family speak family speak it um i personally didn't really grow up speaking it but you know a lot of people in my direct environment did so i can definitely understand it i could mimic it but it would never sound like i was a bavarian native speaker yeah. if you will but i could definitely like write i could like write a text message or something that would look like someone who's a native speaker or speaker. basically if i if i were to speak it it would sound like i had an accent pretty yeah. much <laughs> <laughs> and my dialect or my bavarian has gotten much worse like not understanding but the the speaking because um, you don't spend as much time out in in the rural areas anymore. exactly yeah yeah okay the next question is um, wenn man nur 24 Stunden in München hat, was sollte man unbedingt sehen oder machen so if you only had 24 hours in munich what should one definitely see or do. And I think that one was a difficult one for people. Viktualienmarkt, vielleicht mal durch einen englischen Garten laufen und die Isar vielleicht noch, ja, ja. aber ja einfach durch die Stadt laufen. Ich glaube, dann sieht man, sieht man genug, dann hat man es auch eigentlich gesehen. Ja. Auch gerne mal durch die Stadt laufen, an der Oper vorbei und einfach die ganze Architektur und die Gebäude finde ich richtig. Mhm. Hast du so ein hat das Besonderes. Hast du so ein Lieblingsgebäude hier in München? Ähm. Lieblingsgebäude. Nee, okay. nicht wirklich. <lacht> Habe ich wahrscheinlich auch nicht. Also vielleicht, keine Ahnung, vielleicht das Rat Rathaus oder so. I think we only had two answers for this one. Because <lacht> it kind of like overlaps with the question of what was people's yeah. favorite spot in Munich. So um, these two guys basically both suggested to just walk through the city. The one said Viktualienmarkt, which is like the farmer's market that's close to Marienplatz, so very central. I don't know if we mentioned that when we talked about Carnival. Um, but that's kind of where we also mm -hmm. spend some time on on Faschingsdienstag on Fat Tuesday for Carnival. But you can yeah. buy lots of great food there. There's restaurants mm -hmm. there. Um, then he said um, English Garden, I believe. Yep, if I remember he correctly. He said maybe walk through the English Garden. And the Isa, which is the river. So like all mm -hmm. spots that we'd already mentioned before. And then the other guy said Marine. What did he say? He said, go through the city, mm -hmm. look at the architecture, kind of just go through the pedestrian zone. Yeah, pedestrian and zone. And you'll pretty yep. much see everything then. 
Yeah. So I think that's a pretty good answer. I always find it very difficult when people ask me that question. We yeah. asked the question because you guys had submitted it. So we just wanted to make sure that we actually forward those questions to the people that they were addressed to. But yeah. I definitely personally find that a difficult question to answer because it's like... Same here. Th th there's that it really depends on perf personal preferences. Like if you're a nature person, if you're an, a history architecture person, um, yeah. if you you know enjoy certain activities, there's always different answers for that. But I feel like the top thing to do is just go like as central as you can. So Marienplatz yeah. Rathaus, start there, go through like the old town, see all of those things. And then after that, decide what, what else you want to do if you have exactly. 24 hours. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if I talked in an episode about how I had someone from the U.S. from my high school who was here visiting. Yeah, you mentioned did, that. Um, so I can tell you the little the little tour that we did because they were only mm -hmm. here for one day. But we started in Marienplatz, then they went up to the top of the Sankt Peterskirche, so St. Mm -hmm. Peter's Church, which has a really nice view on a clear day. If it's really clear, uh, you can even see the Alps from the top. Uh, it's a lot of stairs to walk up, though. Yeah. Um, then we walked through the Viktualienmarkt. Then we went to Hofbräuhaus because they're American and wanted to see Hofbräuhaus. True. Um, then we did like the one guy said, go to the opera, walk past the opera, up towards Marie, uh, towards Odeonsplatz. Um, we then walked through the Hofgarten. And on the other side of the Hofgarten, you can kind of walk straight to the Eisbachwelle, mm -hmm. which is where the surfers are. I'm surprised no one mentioned that. Oh, true. Um, yeah. You can see people surfing in the river pretty much any, every single day. Even um, in the winter. <laughs> even in the winter. Then we went a little bit through the English Garden, walked around the southern portion. I would even recommend if you're up for walking, uh, go up to the Chinese Tower because it's kind of cool. And there's a beer garden there that you can have a drink if the beer garden is open. Um, and then also along the, the Isar. We went down the Isar mm -hmm. towards, like um, th like I mentioned earlier, the Reichenbachbrücke and then to the Gärtnerplatz. Mm -hmm. And then ended up back through the Viktualienmarkt in Marienplatz. But that's a nice little, it's a lot of walking. Um, and of course, the public transportation wasn't working that day because of the strike. Mm. Um, but I definitely, that if you're up for a lot of walking, that's a nice little uh, tour to do. Yeah, Would here's your tour. I'm actually surprised nobody mentioned Gärtnerplatz as one of their favorite spots in Munich. Cause yeah, that, I just it's really, it's popped really nice. back into my head. I completely forgot about that place. There's so many yeah. nice spots in Munich, really. Yeah. One of my other also favorite spots would be like Monopteros in yep, um, exactly. the English Garden. It's like this pavilion thing that's like up on the hill and you can sit there on the steps and if it's like a nice sunset, um, you can just yeah sit there with your beer, food, whatever, yeah. and just like have kind of like an, an overview of the city. You don't see like all the skyline, but you see a little bit of it and you can you see can the see park. You can see a whole bunch of towers. And, yeah. yeah. So... It's really nice. That's another place. There's and just that's, way that, too much. <laughs> that's, if you're from the U.S. And, or from a place where you don't have uh, the ability to drink in public, that's something I would recommend you do too. Like like Feli just said, find a nice place to sit down, have a beer, yeah. have a glass of wine, um, and enjoy. Yeah. The next question was kind of like more of a political controversial question, I guess. Um, and it was, lieber ein höheres Gehalt und weniger Urlaubstage oder mehr Urlaubstage und ein niedrigeres Gehalt? So would you prefer having a higher salary and less vacation days or more vacation days and a lower salary? Which obviously kind of refers to the difference between Germany and the US. I don't think everyone who we asked that question to understood the reference, mm -hmm. um, but obviously in the US, you tend to have a higher salary, like the average salary in the US for certain industries is higher than uh, in Germany. But at the same time, 10 vacation days are kind of standard in the US, whereas in Germany, you have to have at least 26 yes. by law. And salaries are a little bit lower, so... Either 24 right. or 26. I think it's 26. Yeah, one of the two. I think we mentioned that so many times in our podcast. I think we just get it mixed up every single yes. time. Anyways, it's a lot of vacation days, and most people have around 30 in their work yeah. contract. So that was the question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. In the context, I have to say, in the USA, I don't know if you know, it's very often that people only have 10 vacation days, but that's why they're the same. Okay. It must be an appropriate relationship, say I. So if it's enough, and I can make my vacation better, it will be a little bit more. And what is it for you? Also ausreichend, das was Urlaubstage anbelangt. Also 
Also mindestens 26. 26, ja, okay, ja, ja, gesetzlich dann. Ja, ja genau. <lacht> ich habe schon jetzt schon. Ich bin an der LMU. Ich habe viel Freizeit und kein Geld. <lacht> also würden Sie das andere wählen oder würden Sie das immer wieder? Nee, so ich wählen? würde das so behalten. Ja, okay. das, ist schon, das ist schon toll. Verstehe. Ja. Also ich würde niemals mehr arbeiten wollen für mehr Geld. Mhm. Wen, also genauso wie jetzt, aber für faires Geld. Aber das ist für eine Frau in München ja schwierig. Ja. Und dann nicht Ingenieurin, also Sprachwissenschaften. Und ja, das ja. ist klar. Die Bereiche sind so ein allgemein. Ja. Der Podcast, ich glaub, aber ich habe tolle so Studenten, ja, ganz tolle ich. Studenten. Ja, ja. <lacht> Und ich mag meinen Job, aber es Sehr ist cool. ja äh, klar. Ich meine, es ist, ich glaube, es ist immer so: Einer muss gut verdienen, einer muss ITer sein oder Arzt oder was weiß ja. ich mhm. oder Rechtsanwalt. Aber dann hat man keine Beziehung. <lacht> Weil der eine nur arbeiten genau. muss. Wenn man keine Zeit hat, bringt es auch nichts. Oh, ja, das ist beides. <lacht> Wenn du entscheiden möchtest. Ja, lieber ein bisschen mehr Urlaub, aber ja, kommt drauf an, ja. was man auch macht. Wenn es einem Spaß macht, dann kann man auch weniger Urlaubstage und mehr. Ja, naja. muss stimmen. There's a lot to summarize. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I think this one is hard to answer in Germany. Let's see, the first guy, he said he wanted... Well, most of them said that they would prefer more vacation days, to sum to summarize it. Like, most of them said that. There was one guy who said at first, oh, uh, definitely more salary. And then I kind of gave him yeah. the context of, like, well, 10 vacation days. And he was like, no, 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 it has to be, like, enough vacation days. And you asked, well, yeah. what's enough? And he was like, at least 26. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so exactly. he said, but like, if then he could have 26 vacation days and not more, but then have more money to make those vacations nicer, he said that would be worth it. Yeah. But most of them all said that it has to be the right balance. There was this exactly. one woman who works at the university. She's teaching languages, uh, Slavic languages, or mm -hmm. did she teach one? Specific? I think specifically Slovenian. Yeah, okay. I wasn't sure if she just said like, um, just but I think she does Slovenian and maybe Slavic studies. I'm, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Slovenian. And she said that she already has that situation. She has lots of free time and not, doesn't <laughs> no make money. a lot of money. Because, like, you know, the university system is a little bit different in Germany because people don't really pay the universities a lot of money. So, obviously, they don't have, like, these insane amounts of salaries there like they sometimes do at American universities. Mm. Well, a lot of the money always goes to the athletes, but... <laughs> I was going to say, it really depends on, uh, depends on what they're teaching in the U.S. Yeah, too, but right. I know that, like, if you are a professor that has a, a full-time job, not, like, um, adjunct or mm -hmm. freelancing or whatever, I definitely know that they can make pretty good money there. Yeah. Compared to Germany, <laughs> where, like, if you're a professor, it usually doesn't mean you're going to be rich. Um, mm. Anyways, she said that if she could keep that, she would always keep the free time over like yeah. giving up the free time. But she would like to have a more fair salary um, and the same free time. But she said she that you can't really pick that. <laughs> and she also made the point that uh, it's important that I think she said if you're in a relationship that at least one of you uh, makes good money, though. Yeah, she said it's <laughs> hard for a woman in Munich to find that where you have enough free time and um, a good salary or a what's the word I'm looking for? Angemessen. Reasonable. Or yeah, a reasonable a, salary. Or per, in, 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 in proportion mm -hmm. or like the balance, balance, maybe. Yeah, so, but then she said, and especially in like linguistics, that's difficult. Yeah. And then she said, yeah, but then if you have your partner and he has to be like an engineer or IT person or lawyer, then like you need that income for your family. But then at the same time, you're not going to have a relationship because that person will always work and never have time. Yeah. So it's a constant uh, Teufelskreis, <laughs> never ending. Yeah, say yeah. that again. Catch 22. We mentioned that before, that yes. expression. I, I like, I haven't included that into my active vocabulary yet <laughs> yes yes well i guess we have to answer that too right oh that's true I, I would actually be very curious i think this should be one of the questions that we should ask the cincinnati people yeah. as well when we do this because i'm very curious to see what people would say i mm -hmm. feel like this kind of lined up with what you would expect germans to say i guess yeah that are kind of happy in the system that they live in but yeah what's your answer josh i would agree with pretty much all of them especially living in germany now I like having my vacation days. So I would agree with the first guy. If if I'm happy with my 30 vacation days and if I can make more money then and maintain the 30 vacation days, that would be perfect because then I can enjoy the 
the vacations even more, but I don't really need more than 30 vacation days. That's already a problem that a lot of people have is like, oh, I have so much vacation. When am I going to take it? Mm -hmm. Which is really weird for Americans to hear. But yes, I I hear that on a pretty regular basis, especially because... If you don't use your vacation one year, it'll roll over to the next year oftentimes. Or if you work overtime, then you'll also like add up more time off that you'll have to take. And then like like abarbeiten basically, but that's like a a weird word to say. Like not, you don't have to work it off. You have to use it up somehow. So. So yeah, that would be my take. I definitely, in the German system would agree, I don't need more vacation days. Yeah. It's really hard for me to answer that. I was going to say, because you're in self-employed. An yeah, I'm not in like an employee s- situation. I think I would have to go along with the Germans and say yeah. less, because I'm not really a materialistic person. And I've been on amazing vacations in my lifetime on yeah. a low budget. And um, of course, it's always nice to have like a nicer hotel, but it doesn't really make the vacation any better, no. usually in my experience. No. Um, like in my memories, that's never a factor that I specifically remember. Um, yeah. So I would always say more vacation time and less money. Yep, yeah, I would agree. <laughs> so the next question is, where do you like to vacation? Okay, here we or are. So holiday. where where do you go with all of your vacation days? Yes. Mallorca. Sehr deutsch Antwort. Sehr deutsch Antwort. Und wieso? Die Mischung macht die Insel Man kann da schön am Strand liegen. Man kann trotzdem Party machen. Und man trifft halt immer Menschen, die auch Deutsch sprechen, ne? Ja, sehr praktisch dann. Ja, <lacht> ja stimmt. Hier? Ja, trifft auch zu. Ja. ja. Ähm, bei mir Australien. Also da war ich einen Monat und ähm, ich habe es geliebt. Ich fand es wunderschön. Wir machen jetzt auch nächstes Jahr eine längere Reise, sind ein Jahr unterwegs und dann mal schauen, was noch dazu kommt. Genau. Und ich bin absolut der Nordsee-Fan. <lacht> Deutsche Küste da. Ja, absolut. Skandinavien allgemein. Ja, Skandinavien auch, aber mehr Norden wie Süden. Ah, okay. Mhm. Sehr interessant. Ja, das ist unter, weil ich segle jetzt auf dem Mittelmeer nicht mehr, sondern nur mehr am Stamberger See, also meistens Stamberg. In der Umgebung. Ja. ja, wo es kalt ist. Ich fahre am 18. am Finnland. Ah, <lacht> viel Spaß da. Danke. Those are some interesting answers. The, Very different. Yeah. Like everyone said something different. The first group said Mallorca. Which Very is a, typical German response. That, well, that's what we also said in the moment. <laughs> exactly. For those of you who don't know, Mallorca is an island. It's a Spanish island in the Mediterranean Sea. Um, and it's known for the amount of Germans that go there. It's like little Germany. You, and the reason they said like that they like to go is because they can speak German there. You meet people who speak German. You're on, on in a tropical, not tropical environment, but warm environment. Um Yeah, yeah. so they said it's like practical and they can party there because like that's one of the things that Mallorca is known for. It's actually a beautiful island. I've personally only been there once, but my parents go there kind of a lot, Mm -hmm. not for the partying, but for like hiking and stuff like that because it has beautiful nature. Um, But the one spot where all the Germans usually go for partying is called Balaman. And it's like this beach or the section of the coast, basically, where there's just a lot of clubs. There's German Schlager singers who literally have like a residency there, if you will. Like they play there every single night. They have their own club. Yeah, it's like its own little world. And I don't think it's necessarily my type of thing, Um, but it's definitely a very popular destination for Germans. There's lots of deals, uh, like travel deals that you can get to go from Germany to Mallorca, and it's actually also sometimes referred to as the 17th Bundesland, the 17th exactly. state of Germany. So <laughs> that's that. <laughs> and then what did the second group say? There was there was the mother and daughter, and she the daughter, daughter said that she loves Australia. She was there mm-hmm. for a month and fell in love with it, and um, she'll be doing a lot of travel soon because she is having a one-year trip. And the mom said that she likes to go to the North Sea. Mm-hmm. Or what? You, what's the North yeah, Sea yeah. called in English? North Sea? I think, yeah, yeah North Sea. Okay. Mm-hmm. Isn't there like another For Ostsee, Ostsee is Baltic Sea. Mm, that's why, yeah, yeah, okay, that's what yeah. I get it confused with. Yeah, so she likes, she said she likes to go to the North Sea, um, also Scandinavia, but also the German coast. And she says she prefers north over south, which usually most Germans like to go south. Everywhere where it's mm-hmm. warmer, you know, more like Southern Europe, beaches, that's... For most Germans, I would argue, the more popular uh, vacation Mm -hmm. destinations. Yeah. Then we had the gentleman who said that uh, he doesn't see himself uh, uh, sailing in the Mediterranean anymore. So he would prefer just to be uh, in Stanberg. 
on the uh, Stamberger See, on the lake, and just sailing there, which I mean kind of implies that he used to sail in the Mediterranean. So it sounds like a pretty good life <laughs> that he yeah. had. <laughs> and uh, Phoebe asked if, <laughs> made the assumption that he doesn't have any he doesn't have a, a real estate in Stamberg either, and he said, "No, I have, I have it." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. As I asked that earlier when we talked about um, spots where he would live, and yeah, he said, "Oh, sorry, owns, yeah, that's right." Yeah, he yeah. owns something there. Yeah, I so, thought he said it here. No, you're right. That um, that makes sense for him then <laughs> that he would vacation there. <laughs> and then there was the woman who said uh, she likes to go where it's cold. Mm -hmm. So she's going to Finland here soon. She said. And then what about you? What about me? Okay, so I always was I definitely one of those people who likes to go south. <laughs> yeah. So Italy, Greece, Gr Croatia, Spain. Yeah. But I feel like even recently that I went on my trip with Ben, I was kind of reminded by how much I really like Greece and the Greek culture also. When I was a child, we always went on vacation a lot. And I always preferred Italy or Spain over Greece because of the nice sand beaches. Because mm. Greece doesn't have as much um, sand beaches. They have a lot of like gravel beaches. Yeah. So as a, as a child, I always liked uh, Italy a lot for that reason. Mm -hmm. And then I guess for me, I would also say south as opposed to north, mm -hmm. Spain, Italy, Croatia. Um, I haven't been to Greece. I I haven't been to Spain yet either. That is on my list. Oh, for the next, uh, yeah. I, I'll, I I'll forgot soon, about that. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you always mentioned that you could maybe see yourself like even living there one day. I or know something. it's just because I get along <laughs> with Spanish people really well. Yeah, and um, I mean I love being in Spanish speaking cultures. Of course, Spain is different than Latin America, but. Um, no, I'm sure you're going to love it. So <laughs> Yeah. No, and then um, it'll be interesting. I, we're sticking to European answers, I guess, right now. But I was also going to say Puerto Rico. I mean, we had such yeah. a nice vacation there. Yeah, yeah that, that was awesome. has to be mentioned. But yeah. Yeah, for uh, sure. I mean, are, I also like vacationing places. in the U.S., to be honest. Like, um, yeah, my, for sure. The road trips that I've been able to go on with my parents, especially, like, to all the national parks in the U.S., that was also great. That's not necessarily, like, as a Munich person, the most common vacation spot though yeah, that's something exactly. that a lot of munich people do like once in their life mm -hmm. um that's like a big thing that they've had planned for a long time but you know those kinds of things like mallorca that's something that some people do like once or twice a year exactly. every year <laughs> yeah makes sense it's a lot closer yeah so the next one or the next two i guess are a little bit more u.s uh specific mm -hmm. they this one is woran denkt ihr wenn ihr amerikanisches essen hört so what do you think when you hear of American food. Fast food das erste an, was ja, man denkt auf jeden Fall. Natürlich als erstes, wenn man so oder Steaks. Mhm. Mhm. Auf jeden Fall fettiges Essen, ja. <lacht> <lacht> Schnelles fettiges <lacht> Essen, ja. So das erste. Hamburger. <lacht> ja, schon, ja. Hamburger. Okay. Ich denke an Fast Food. Ja, Englisch. Fast Food. Viel Fett. Ja. <lacht> ja. <lacht> Nicht sehr Burger. gesund. <lacht> ja, Burger, Fries, so Pommes, ne? Hamburger. Und ja. Burger. Ja, Burger, ja. Sonst Schon was? Burger, Pommes, Pizza, Fast Food allgemein ja. eigentlich. Ja. Sehr ungesund auf jeden Fall. Ja. Milchshakes. Ja. Okay. <lacht> I think that was a pretty clear response from everyone. The most common response was burgers, hamburgers. Um, a lot of people said greasy, greasy food, yeah. unhealthy food, fries, um, pizza. I think someone said milkshakes. But yeah. yeah, and the first person also said McDonald's, like the, just exactly. the restaurant. Fast food was also another thing yeah. that a lot of them said. Fast food, burgers, greasy, unhealthy. <laughs> Which is a sh I mean, I have to say as an American, it is a shame. Like, yes, that's definitely what's most prevalent but there are some nice regional cuisines in the u.s too yeah but they're just we'll not it. really like known yeah. outside of the u.s yeah they didn't i mean and them. i would agree that they're normally unhealthy <laughs> so that, yeah. that's also accurate but they're they're nice but yeah i mean yeah. from my personal experience i will have to say like when you go to like these any kind of like state fairs or where there's um food trucks or something like that there's yeah. always like everything deep fried yeah. and i know oh, that's yeah, maybe sure. not common all over the u.s but that was a shock for me like even just fried pickles that's not even a crazy thing yeah. that's the thing that's on a lot of menus that was oh, weird yeah. to me um they have sauerkraut balls which they think is like german but they fry sauerkraut um yeah. <laughs> they fry oreos they fry pretty much everything <laughs> you can get fried butter yeah, it's so weird. But I mean, that's where that comes from, you know? That's no, where no, the cliche for sure. comes from. It's 100% accurate. It's 100% accurate. 
that's what we also think of just to give our uh, input on how we would answer oh. that question as well. I would agree. I mean, when I think of American food, I think of fast food, like Applebee's type food. Um, yeah, maybe also like mac and cheese. I mean, for I think yeah, for you and, and I, cheese, definitely there's yeah, more stuff that comes to mind definitely. than just burgers. But yeah, if I think like, for example, if Ben and I or me and like his family or like a group of friends talk about where should we go eat, to eat and it's like oh let's go like to an american restaurant because you can like go mexican whatever chinese yeah. it's like oh let's go to an american restaurant i'll definitely associate that with oh they'll have burgers that'll have fries not yeah. a lot of them have like milkshakes but if you go to a diner kind of place or something yeah. then they'll have milkshakes too and a lot of americans like to dip their fries in the milkshakes <laughs> so cool. um, i think of places like restaurants more like cheesecake factory like yeah that. Like those type of places are very American to me, and I definitely yeah. And to me, like, like yeah. it'll have like the burgers and stuff, but then it'll also maybe have like mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. It'll have salads. Usually, every single salad on the menu will have some kind of meat on it or fish, mm-hmm. <laughs> but they'll have salads. Usually, that's then my thing that I'll go to. Um, I'm trying to think what else will they? Oh, like chicken wings, like yeah. everything, like wings. I was also going like to say that. barbecue. Like, mm-hmm. um, I think I, that's that's interesting that no one mentioned barbecue because barbecue. That's not and really like, that well known. I feel no, like in Germany, but it has a really uh, rich culture in the U.S. Um, but you have to explain what regions. that is. Yeah, like oh 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 okay. <laughs> because no, because when a German hears barbecue, they mean grillen. Like what? Like yeah. what do you mean by that? You know? No, true. How do you even describe barbecue? It's like slow cooked meat. Um, often, I mean, you can bar, you can yeah, it's mostly smoked. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are so many different regions, and they do barbecue differently. Yeah, so but you can go to... to a barbecue restaurant, right? It's not yeah. like when you say, "Oh, I like to eat barbecue," doesn't mean, "Oh, I like to uh, do a cookout with my friends." Oh, That's no, not no, no. necessarily what that means. Yeah, it's a good it's thing a... that you pointed that out because I would have just left it at that. But no, they're like brisket, uh, pulled pork sandwiches, like coleslaw. That's also, those are all very, to me, American things. And Mm -hmm. also Southern. I feel like for me, a lot of American food is also Southern food. So I think of grits. um, I think of biscuits and like biscuits and gravy. Um, If you want to think like Northeast, I think of like um, lobster rolls, Mm -hmm. that type of stuff. Grits is kind of like, Half a schleim or something like no. that, or it's, what is it? Uh, what is it? Is it like grutz? What what is Grütze? it? Mean? Yeah, I think it's similar to that. It's it's like po, uh, polenta, similar. It's like a gri- a, a, a grain. It's a I don't know. Gris. That's gris is probably the not half of a gris. And then uh, biscuits and gravy. Um, biscuits are kind of similar to what Germans will know as British scones. From the way they look, but the way they taste is very different. Have you had scones in the UK? Because scones in the in the US are different than scones in the UK. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Then yeah. maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. I haven't had scones yeah. in the UK. Um. So yeah, that because I looked into that one time. Like, what is the difference? Because like a scone in the US is completely different than a scone in the in the UK. Okay. Southern US American um, biscuits are more like what scones are in the UK. They're kind of like these warm, kind of fluffy pastries and you can put something on it like you can and in in the south they often put like gravy on it so like yeah, which is also different gravy. to the yeah it's to it's the so, gra- we're, we're, <laughs> we're we're going way too into detail look these things up on your own but these are things that are very i just common. don't want to confuse people because that yeah. like biscuits and gravy sounds weird if you're german and you're thinking mm-hmm. wait like cakes or like these these yeah. things that you put yeah, in yeah. tiramisu with like gravy sauce no, like no, braten no. sauce what <laughs> so yeah i think when you ask us especially josh obviously because you're from the u.s and i've just kind of been surrounded by it now there's a lot more answers than just hamburgers and fries yeah. but it also definitely comes to mind and when i think oh, of like where will i take my american boyfriend or american friends when we're out in the world like in europe or somewhere and they i want to make them feel like home it'll definitely be mcdonald's so oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. well the, it's super easy too because there's mcdonald's everywhere yeah and then people will know what they want and most yeah. of the menu will be at least somewhat similar or the same not everything is the same but it's pretty similar it's similar enough yeah. so yeah <laughs> exactly okay. last question was kind of similar and it was woran denkt ihr bei amerikanischer mode beziehungsweise wie kleiden sich Amerikaner? So what do you think of when you hear American fashion or uh, what do Americans dress like? Die Welt nicht so gestylt wie die Europäer. Okay. Würde ich fast sagen. Und gibt es so ein Kleidungsstück, was so typisch amerikanisch ist, wenn ihr das seht, dann... 
dann ist es für euch klar. Football-Trikots. Ja, ja. Hab ich jetzt auch gesagt, vielleicht, ja. Vielleicht so Cappies, ne? Mhm. Ja, wobei Football-Trikots hauptsächlich. Ja. Siehst Oder du also Varsity-Jackets. Mhm. Mhm. Seht ihr das oft hier in München, beziehungsweise in Deutschland? Ja, ja schon. Ja, ja. Ich finde, das hat so was, was die Deutschen nicht tragen würden, glaube ich, so außergewöhnlich irgendwie. Also ich glaube, die meisten Kleidungsstücke davon würde ich nicht ja. tragen. Also so. crazy, so Farben ja, und sowas? Ja, schon, ja. Ich finde, das kommt ein bisschen drauf an. Wenn du so an New York denkst, dann würde ich denken, ja, die Leute laufen total elegant gekleidet <lacht> rum. Wenn du dann so an L.A. oder so denkst, da laufen die dann halt völlig abgespaced rum. Also ich finde das so... Eine Mischung. Mischung macht. <lacht> ich habe einen Teil der Familie da tatsächlich ja. und die kommen immer in Jogginghose und T-Shirt. Im Winter. Ja. Ja, und dann ziehen wir die schnell an und keine Ahnung, dann kommen sie da nach Venedig im Februar und die denken, es ist warm. Ja. Und ja, dann ist uns das ein bisschen peinlich. Immer. Und dann sagen die immer, weißt du, es ist alles egal, wir schmeißen alles weg, alles weg. Ziehst du an, schmeißt du weg. Ich sage, ja toll, gell. Aber nee, das ist jetzt, das sind ja auch älter. Ich glaube, die jungen Leute... Das ist ja auch teilweise die Mentalität. Ja, aber die jungen Leute ziehen sich auch heute alle gleich an, denke ich. Also egal, ob in Amerika, Europa. <lacht> so, let's see, the, what did the first group said? Um, not very fashionably. <lacht> He said they wear things that Europeans wouldn't wear. Uh, when asked what he was talking about, he mentioned uh, football jerseys. Uh, she mentioned varsity jackets. I think that was basically it. Yeah, then the second group, and that honestly, I want to comment on the second group because uh, yeah. we didn't have a lot of answers from them. But that um, footage, if you watch on YouTube, it's just like three yes. pairs <laughs> of white sneakers. And it's like the most Munich thing ever or German thing. <laughs> yeah. um, one of the pair of sneakers was yours. And then yes. the other two were theirs yes. of the two girls. And Which you can see... You can see also in a lot of them, like, you should count the white sneakers that you see in this. <laughs> it's pretty much everyone, except for me. Um, but they said that, they said something completely different. They said more like, okay, when you think of New York, you, they think of, like, people are dressed elegantly and um, I think, like, business-like. And then they mm -hmm. said in L.A., they're kind of uh, upgespaced. Uh, yeah, like spaced out. Space, yeah, spacey, uh, like uh, crazy is what she meant. Yeah. Like um, things that people in Germany wouldn't wear is I think what they said. Which I totally disagree. Uh, uh -huh. But I, it's interesting to see their perception. Yeah, that's pr the image, I that's think. What, and, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Yeah, and then for the last one, she said... Um, that she has family that lives in the U.S. and when they come to visit, um, they always show up in just uh, in sweatpants and a t-shirt in the middle of winter. That is, is so, so accurate. So true, so true. <laughs> they think that and they're she, coming, she said they think they're coming to Venice, or they, they're coming to Europe or they're going to Venice in February and it's going to be warm and they show up and it's, uh, and they're in their, uh, they always have to buy stuff and it's like, Yeah, What well, she, she, she the way she phrased it was really funny. She said, yes. so then they show up and it's really embarrassing for us. And then we have yes. to dress them real quick. And it sounds yes. like they're dressing like children. <laughs> um, and then she also mentioned something that they just like throw everything out afterwards in terms yeah. of like clothing. So like, why, I, yeah, why why should we buy quality things if we're just going to be throwing it throwing mm -hmm. it out anyway? So he kind of touched on the whole like waste mindset yeah. that some Americans definitely have, I would But say, I thought what, to Europeans. <laughs> I thought what was interesting with her response too, though, was that she said that um, she thinks that young people everywhere kind of dress the same now, mm -hmm. um, which is somewhat true, but I definitely, and we said this too to her, like, we, in the U.S., I definitely feel like there's much more of a lounge uh, wear yeah. culture. Yeah, so. I feel like we've talked about this, but especially yeah. here in the Midwest, it's 100% yeah. different if you're in L.A. or in, in New York. But if you're yeah. here in the Midwest, it's so normal that I go to the grocery store and there's people in their literally slippers. Like even yeah. Ben doesn't often put on his actual shoes. He'll just go out in his slippers and his comfy socks. Um, and then also people in like almost pajamas, like yeah. not even just sweatpants, but one step above that where it yes. looks like that's what they slept in. And people don't care. <laughs> nobody cares. No. Like they don't care themselves and nobody around them cares either. Uh, some Which, people around them care. Okay, There are definitely but like, comments you don't, that are made, but... It's if the, you look, if you walk like that into a Munich store, everyone would like stare at you. Where I feel like here, people like they'll see them and be like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, And exactly. just like mind their own business kind of. Yeah, though, I, I, some people in Cincinnati will roll their eyes for sure. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. 
But at the end of the day, uh, they, they're not going to say anything and it, they won't stare at them too long. But we always say, and we said that to the woman too, that we feel like we, whenever we're in Europe, we can pick out the Americans just by the way yeah. that they're dressed. I mean, you always say that, that like you can tell if there is an American on the yeah. streets of Munich just by yeah. what they're wearing. Normally I can. Normally I can. But yeah, I mean, I would agree with a lot of that stuff though. Um, yeah, and a lot of more just like gym clothes and um, mm-hmm. as someone said, like jerseys, like just in general, anything that's like sports related, athletics related. And I think maybe that's what he meant because I wouldn't necessarily agree with people walking around in football jerseys. I never see that. Yeah. Or very I mean, rarely. maybe he kind of like thought of the NFL game that was taking yeah. place. And <laughs> yeah. But I, I would agree with like uh, sport, like sports themed uh, shirts and stuff, for example. Yeah. Maybe so. you can't even tell, like, if someone, for example, is wearing a shirt that has their high school logo on it. Yeah. It's like high school merch or from their university. It's not even yeah. jersey, may- jersey maybe, but a T-shirt. It might kind of have that association for a Munich person because we yeah. don't really wear merch with, like, big logos yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Exactly. So. <laughs> that but was the no, last one. That was the last one. This was a really fun thing for us to do, and I'm really excited to do the Cincinnati version. Dude, so, so it, many more people are going to be willing to talk to us. I already I know, know it. We're going to have so <laughs> like we're going to have to talk to two two different people, and we're going to have like two hours of footage. Yeah. If you guys have any questions for that, feel free to send us an email, send us a message on Instagram, or comment on YouTube. Or comment on YouTube. Um, we'll yeah. look through those and and get the questions. I'm sure I'll put up a thing on Instagram as well before mm-hmm. um, before we actually go out on the streets as well. Um, so definitely but- make sure to follow us on Instagram so that you don't miss that. And I think Josh, you also said that you might post a video from yes. your skiing vacation on Instagram. Yes, I will. I will. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. It was really fun. Um, and it, these were nice memories for me because they were really fun conversations. So just another yeah. shout out to everyone who took the time to talk to us. Um, if you are watching this or hearing this, uh, thank you. Yes, thank you. And thank you guys for listening to our episode today. We'll be back in two weeks on Thursday. Until then, make sure to follow us. Um, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. Um, subscribe or follow on the audio streaming platforms. Give us a five-star review on Spotify, etc. And yeah, then we'll be back in two weeks. Cheers. It's done.